Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So I have proof that the damn Alex Carp messed up the Q1 earnings on purpose for Palantir. Okay, so it's been a few days now. I've had time to calmly read through and think through what has happened. And I feel like we need to have a talk. So basically, if you watch the internet, then you see that Q1 earnings of Palantir was a disaster. A disaster. It was the worst thing that happened to the stock. And damn it, Alex Carp. So <laughs> this really reminds me of my son. So my son is very interesting because he is very, very easygoing. And if he goes on an activity and then other people like the activity, he will automatically love the activity. But we were on a forest hike uh, last week and he loves to be in the forest. But my wife started to say, oh, I hate this forest. And then my daughter started to say, oh, I saw a spider. And then all of a sudden my son was like, yes, me too. I uh, hate forests and I'm never going to come to a forest again. And <laughs> this is a, a bit right now, many of you in the Palantir community, because I believe if you just look at the earnings, I'm going to go look at them earlier. It was a fantastic quarter. We're going to look at this again, but I really want to make sure that you're not being a lemming and you know, you judge the quarter based on what you think and not on what other people think. And I really encourage you to not look at the stock price because I feel that what happened to the stock price is one thing, but if you wouldn't know what happened to the stock price, you would just read the report, it would be a very good quarter. I saw a lot of speculation that uh, the stock of uh, Palantir was crashed because Alex Corp went on a rant in the beginning of the earnings call and people didn't understand what he was saying. Damn Alex! They misrepresented the numbers and they changed around numbers and they want to mislead people and uh, they dodged questions. They didn't didn't answer reporters about the next quarter and therefore the whole company is shit. It went from 44 billion down to 20 billion and it deserves to be 5 billion because they couldn't answer a question about Q2. And Alex Corp is arrogant guys. And um, yeah, so I want to take up these points, you know, when in doubt, zoom out. So what was actually reported on uh, Palantir? So the revenue grew 31% year over year, which is actually higher than the, because the management wants 30% per year, right? So they're doing very good on this. Then a lot of people want to see them because for them to expand, they need to expand outside the government. And in the beginning, a lot of bears were trashing the company that, oh, they're just a government contractor and they're never going to be anything. So for us to have our bull thesis come through on this, they need to really expand in the commercial sector and really get new customers because, you know, also when a company has very concentrated customers, like, you know, two customers uh, equate, I don't know, 60% of the revenue of a company, that's huge danger, huge red flag, right? So as an investor, you want Palantir to diversify away from the government and, you know, get a lot of new customers because they have very few, very big customers, right? So what happened in this quarter? The commercial revenue grew 54% year over year for a fifth quarter in a row accelerating. And remember that there, they were only a government contractor for only a few years back. I believe Foundry is a 2018 product. So the fact that they're accelerating the commercial growth and it's at 54% you know this quarter is fantastic that's exactly what you want to see as an investor this means that they really have a product market fit and you know the customers are really finding value in their offering and i cannot stress enough how good this number is then us commercial revenue 136% year over year and 86% increase in their customer number. And the reason why this is also really good is because Palantir customers tend to spend more with Palantir year over year. You know, you will see it also below here that they have a over 100% net retention, which is also crazy in, in the SaaS business. I happen to dabble into SaaS business and I'm telling you, it's it, when you're in the SaaS business, you're fighting to keep the customers. So in the SaaS business that I was in, we were happy if a customer stayed more than six months. And many times we had to give discounts for the customers to sign them up past the year. Now you realize Palantir is not only not giving discounts, their average customer spends more with them 
the next year, which is crazy. So this means that all these customers are probably going to spend even more with them next year, even if they're not selling to any new customers, they're going to have a revenue increase. Then this is where the upsets come in, right? That they took away from here, they normally showed how their adjusted operating income was at, I believe, 30, around 30%, and they completely took that out because they only did 26%, and they're guiding for 20% next year. Oh my God, how dare do they do this? This completely changes the thesis. So the thing again, calm down, calm down. So I wanna say that the management of the company actually guided for a lower operating income. They, I don't remember the exact number. I, I think they guided for 23%. And instead of 23%, they did 26%. So this quarter, again, is better than what they guided for. And in the time that I followed Palantir, they have been extremely good at, you know, sandbagging their numbers. So, you know, so far when I've seen them, they have come in at or better than what they said that they have. I didn't, wasn't following them in 2020. So maybe you find a quarter when it wasn't like that. But since I'm following them, they have been extremely good at, you know, beating what they say that they would do. Then the next upset is that they are guiding for only 20% growth next year. However, again, they're saying that they're going to keep their year-end guidance of, I just have to find it. Here, they're reiterating that they have this long-term growth of 30%. They have a 27% operating margin for the year. So that basically means that they're going to have something happen in Q2 that is going to drag down their numbers, but they already see now, and they're very confident because they reiterated these numbers, that they're going to be even more profitable and it's going to be very good in the next half year. I guess this has to do something with the Ukraine and, you know, the Russian war and, you know, the uncertainty that we have in this world. So the thing is, what you need to keep in mind, very important, is that one quarter doesn't change anything. If you're in Palantir, you're in Palantir because you're here for the vision and, you know, you're here for the long term. So the fact that they're going to have a bad quarter, I mean, I can give you how many bad quarters did Tesla have? I mean, when they were, you know, beginning ramping of Model 3, Elon Musk missed the Model 3 production targets in, I think, three quarters in a row. They almost went bankrupt. Their cash was rapidly decreasing. They were missing on every number you could think of. It was very, very ugly. And look at where they are now. And I truly believe on Palantir that management is sandbagging. And look, they guided for 23% and they got 26%. They're even guiding that there's a lot of upside here based on certain factors. And they here's the upset. They didn't answer what the upside is. And again, they're government contractors. They work with the war effort. They have worked in the CIA. I believe even they reiterated many times on this conference call that they can't fully disclose the things that are going on. So maybe they have a uh, secret agreement with, I'm really speculating here, okay? I'm really, really speculating here. Maybe they know that Biden is sending aid to Ukraine and Ukraine is going to order from them. And they even said this in the conference call that they're not gonna not help you, you know, in your darkest hour when you need it, when the paperwork is not done. So maybe they started working for Ukraine. Maybe they moved resources there. They know that money is coming because the U.S. approved 33 billion of extra financing for, you know, the war effort. And they're simply just risking it, you know, putting the people to work and they know that, you know, the product is going to be valuable and they're going to get paid. And obviously they're not allowed to disclose this. I don't know if this is the situation. I guess this is just a wild speculation for me. But what I'm trying to say is I give them a total pass because I don't believe one quarter changes anything. Here's a table. This table, by the way, you can download on Patreon if you want to support this channel. It's five bucks a month and you have my eternal gratitude. And you can see here, you can play with the numbers. And even if you lessen the operating, your whole thesis changes and you say, okay, they're not gonna have 30% profitability. They're going to have 25% uh, profitability in 2025 the share price is still going to be $27. Uh, if you want a compounded annual yearly return, many people are happy with 
25%, many people are happy with 20%. I'm calculating with heavy stock dilution. I believe that the total outstanding stocks fully diluted is even less than what I'm calculating with. I think I have a mistake here. I saw it in the report, but 9 34 is a super good price for you. So the price is currently at seven. It's a total overreaction. I mean, for this price to make sense, I don't know, you, you would have to play with the table, but basically you're saying that they will have, I don't know, let's see, 15%, no, that's too low. Let's say 20% margin and 30% growth, yeah. So basically then you're saying that their margin is going to be 20%. Probably they're not going to grow as fast as they are now. My point is, if you're a believer in this stock, calm down. Don't act like my son. This quarter doesn't change anything. Alex Cart is a good guy. He's working on our side. They are a startup. They have only been in the commercial business the last three years. And they admit themselves that they're not good salespeople. They're hiring salespeople. They have a lot to learn. And you know, expansion is not a straight line up. You will have better than expected quarters and you will have worse than expected quarters. It's just a trend. So I hope that all of you are using this opportunity to cost average down on your stocks. I basically put 100% of my portfolio in Palantir. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you are blaming Alex Carp and uh, you're drinking or you're buying more stocks. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.